right, everybody, buckle up, because today we are diving deep into the world of outsmarting market makers. Oh, yeah. You know those folks who seem to have a sixth sense for where the market's going? Mm -hmm. Well, you sent in chapters six and seven from a source you called uh, Text Kale. Yeah, okay. And both chapters are laser focused on scalping, which for anyone who's new to this means trying to make profits from these tiny, super fast trades, often holding positions for just seconds or minutes. Exactly, riding those little waves in the market. Right, catching the quick wins while others are still trying to figure out which way is up. Ah, uh, exactly. But here's the catch, and this is where your question gets really juicy. Mm -hmm. You're curious if you can actually automate scalping. Yeah, can you program a computer to be faster and smarter than the humans, even the pros? Especially, and this is key, in markets where market makers are calling the shots. Right, because they're the ones setting the pace often holding large positions, influencing the order flow. It's like trying to outmaneuver a shark in a swimming pool. They've got the home advantage. Haha, <laughs> that's one way to put it. But hey, that's why we're here, to break down these chapters, decode the tactics, and see if there's any gold we can actually mine from this. Absolutely. And speaking of gold mines, this source throws out a term that's both intriguing and a little bit terrifying. Trapped volume. Ah, yes. This is where things get interesting. Right. It's almost like a like a market maker mousetrap or something. A very evocative image, isn't it? It is. So paint that picture for us. What exactly do they mean by trapped volume? So imagine this. You've got these pockets of orders. Could be buy orders or sells. Doesn't matter. And they're all kind of stuck. Stuck in positions that are about to go sour. Like they're walking into a room and someone's about to slam the door behind them. Exactly. And often, the source argues, it's the market makers who are influencing this, maybe by creating those fake breakouts or breakdowns that lure in unsuspecting traders. So if we're thinking back to that mousetrap analogy, right, right. those unsuspecting traders are like the little mice. They see this tasty piece of cheese, this promising price movement. And SNME, the trap is sprung. <gasps> they're stuck left holding the cheese, which has now suddenly gone bad, and the market makers are the ones profiting from their misfortune. It's a bit of simplification, of course. Market makers do play a vital role in providing liquidity, you know, keeping the whole system moving. Right, it's not like they're the villains in this story all the time. Exactly. But this source definitely seems to be coming from the perspective of traders who believe that certain market maker tactics are... Well, let's just say they're designed to exploit these moments of trapped volume. They're playing the game, and they're playing it well. Which is where you come in, wanting to know if you can flip the script. Level the playing field. Maybe even get ahead of the game. Exactly. And this is where Chapter 7 gets especially juicy, because it dives deep into how to actually spot these traps. It's like learning the tells of a professional poker player. Those subtle signs that reveal their hand. Love it. So what are some of the tells we should be looking out for? What are these chapters saying? Well, the source talks a lot about order flow and something called volume profile analysis. Okay, those sound like advanced trading terms. Break it down for us. Think of it like forensic accounting for the stock market. You're not just looking at the final price. You're analyzing the footprints left behind by every trade, every buy and sell order. We're putting on our detective hats looking for clues. Exactly. And volume profile analysis, that's where you can really start to see the bigger picture. Okay, I'm intrigued. What kind of picture are we talking about? It helps you visualize where the real trading activity was concentrated at different price levels. Imagine a heat map, right? Okay, I'm picturing a weather map, those blobs of color showing you where the hot and cold fronts are. It's very similar. <laughs> but instead of temperature, we're looking at trading volume. So you can see where the action was hottest, where the big players were buying and selling. And I'm guessing those big volume surges that suddenly reverse are like giant red flags, a sign that maybe, just maybe, some traders got caught off guard. You got it. Imagine you see this huge buy volume spike on the chart. Everyone thinks the price is going to the moon. But then all of a sudden, it reverses and plummets. Ouch. Right. Those initial buyers are now trapped, holding the bag, and that's where the scalpers, particularly the ones who can move incredibly fast, might see an opportunity. Okay, see, this is where my head starts to spin a little, because to execute a trade in that tiny window of opportunity, when the trap is sprung, you'd have to be practically psychic. Or, as this source suggests, incredibly automated. Okay, let's unpack that a bit. What exactly do we mean by automated in this context? It's about building systems that can react to these market events faster than any human ever could. We're talking algorithms, right? 
lines of code that spot these patterns and execute trades in milliseconds. Got it. It's like it's... strapping a rocket engine onto your trading platform. Hold on. I'm still back there trying to process those heat maps. Give us some concrete examples. How would you even begin to automate something like this? Well, the source throws out some pretty cool terms, things like market maker compass and flash volume spike detector. It sounds like we're about to enter the matrix or something. Haha. Huh. It's not quite that sci-fi, but it's definitely next level trading. All right, walk us through it. What would these tools actually do? Think of it this way. You want to be able to spot those trapped volume scenarios the moment they arise, even before the price is fully reflected what's happening. So you're not just reacting to price movements anymore. You're trying to anticipate them based on the order flow, the volume, all those subtle clues that most traders miss. Precisely. The market maker compass, for example. That's all about trying to decode the intentions behind the trades. Decode the intentions? How on earth do you do that? That's the challenge, right? But that's what these algorithms are trying to do by analyzing the order flow in real time. Are they genuine buyers and sellers? Or are they market makers using sophisticated tactics to manipulate the price in a certain direction? Okay, that's both impressive and kind of terrifying. But let's say, hypothetically speaking, I'm a coding whiz and I managed to build these super powered indicators. How do I even begin to test if they actually work? Do I just cross my fingers and hit the trade button? That's a recipe for disaster. No, this is where the source really emphasizes the importance of backtesting. Backtest? Okay, so like going back in time and seeing how these strategies would have performed in the past. Exactly. It's like running your scalping strategies through a time machine, testing them against historical data to see how they would have performed in those crucial moments. So instead of risking real money, I'm essentially practicing on past market data. Kind of like a flight simulator, but for traders. Exactly. You're looking for those patterns in the market maker's behavior, those telltale signs that a trapped volume scenario is about to unfold. And the more you backtest, the more you can refine your algorithms to capitalize on those fleeting opportunities. You got it. And the source even gives you some examples of specific market maker tactics to test your algorithms against. Oh, really? Like what? Give us the inside scoop. Well, one that really jumped out at me was, uh, they called it a liquidity sweep. A liquidity sweep. Okay, that sounds kind of ominous. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's like they suddenly decide to just push the price through a certain level really forcefully, almost like a wave crashing on the shore. Okay, I'm picturing it. And what happens? Why is this tactic so effective? Well, the goal is to trigger a cascade of these stop-loss orders from other traders. Stop loss orders, you mean those preset orders that automatically sell if the price drops below a certain point? Exactly. Traders use them for protection yeah. to limit their losses. Right. Makes sense. But in this case, those stop loss orders actually become part of the market maker's game. Oh, I see where you're going with this. Because by triggering a whole bunch of them at once, the market maker creates a temporary vacuum in the market. So suddenly there's all this extra selling pressure. Exactly. Prices become more volatile, they might swing further than expected, which can lead to even more panic selling. It's like the market maker is intentionally rocking the boat just to make everyone else seasick. Uh-huh, that's one way to put it. So they create this mini flash crash, and then what? What's their end game here? Well, all that rapid buying or selling, that's the sweep. That's their chance to open or close their own positions. But at a price level, they've essentially orchestrated themselves. They're playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. It's a good analogy. And here's the thing. They can do this in either direction. What do you mean? They can drive the price down to trigger stop-loss sells. Or they can drive it up to trigger stop-loss buys. It all depends on what their objective is. Okay, suddenly all those rapid price spikes I've seen on charts make a lot more sense. It's not always just random market noise. It could be a market maker pulling the strings. Exactly. Which brings us back to the question you asked at the beginning. Can you, as an individual trader, actually outsmart this system? Right, because it's one thing to understand the theory, but to actually react to these moves in real time, that's a whole different ballgame. It's like trying to outrun a cheetah, even if you know it's coming. Good luck with that. Well, this is where that concept of speed becomes absolutely paramount. Because even with all the fancy algorithms in the world, if you're not fast enough to react, you'll just get swept up with everyone else. Precisely. You need systems in place that can analyze the order flow, detect these patterns we've been talking about, and then execute trades with, like, 
millisecond precision. Okay, we're talking about a whole different level of trading here. It's like comparing a horse-drawn carriage to a Formula One race car. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a whole different beast. But let's say, for argument's sake, I've got all the tech, the algorithms, I've got a fiber optic cable plugged directly into the stock exchange. Am I good to go? You're getting warmer, but there's one more crucial piece of the puzzle. Oh. Don't leave me hanging. What's the missing ingredient? Information or, more specifically, the ability to see beyond the surface. Okay, now you're just being cryptic. <laughs> Sorry, I can't resist a little bit of drama. Yeah. But seriously, this source is constantly emphasizing the importance of understanding something called hidden liquidity. Hidden liquidity. All right, now you have to explain that one because it sounds like you're talking about a secret stash of cash buried somewhere. It's kind of like that. Think of it this way. Imagine you're at an auction. Okay, I'm picturing a fancy art auction, people in tuxedos holding up little paddles. Perfect. <laughs> so there's this beautiful antique vase up for bids. Okay. Seems like a steal. No one's really biting. Everyone's just kind of watching. Right. But what you don't realize is that there's a secret collector on the phone ready to swoop in with a massive offer. But only if the price drops below a certain point. So on the surface, it looks like there's no interest, but really there are forces at play that you can't see. Exactly. And hidden liquidity is a bit like that. Market makers, they have access to certain tools, certain order types that most retail traders don't even know about. Like what? Give me an example. Well, one classic example is something called an iceberg order. Iceberg order. Okay, that sounds ominous. It's very fitting because only the tip of the order is visible to the market. You mean they're only showing a small portion of their hand? Precisely. So you might see what looks like a relatively small buy or sell order. Right. But underneath the surface, hidden from view, there could be a much larger order just waiting to be triggered. Oh, wow. So that seemingly insignificant order could actually be masking a massive buy or sell order. Exactly. And if you're not careful, you might find yourself on the wrong side of a trade thinking you're being clever by, say, front running a small price movement. But really, you're walking right into a trap set by someone with a much bigger picture in mind. You got it. That's why this source keeps hammering home the point that you can't just blindly trust the raw numbers. So it's not enough to just have the fastest algorithms. You also need to be able to anticipate the market maker's moves to see those hidden patterns. It's almost like you need to be able to read their minds or at least to think several steps ahead just like they do. This is starting to feel less like investing and more like a high stakes game of poker. Haha. Uh -huh. In a way, it is. And that's why, to answer your initial question, building an algorithm to consistently outsmart market makers is incredibly difficult, even with all the data in the world. So it's not impossible, but it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Let's just say it takes a certain type of trader with a very specific skill set and risk tolerance. So you're saying even if we don't have the bandwidth or the risk appetite to become high-frequency traders, there are still valuable lessons we can learn from this whole trapped volume deep dive. Absolutely. Okay, I'm all ears. What's the takeaway for the rest of us? It all boils down to awareness, understanding the forces at play behind those price movements you see on your screen. Right, because it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day noise of the market. Exactly. It's yeah. like you can't predict the weather just by looking out the window. You need to understand the bigger picture, the patterns, the underlying forces. Exactly. And that's what this source is trying to do, to give you a glimpse behind the curtain. Okay, so what's one of the key things we should be looking out for? What's a practical takeaway from all of this? Well, remember how we were talking about volume price impact? Yeah, the idea that bigger orders create bigger ripples in the market. Right. But it's not just about the size of the order. It's about understanding the context. Okay, what kind of context are we talking about? Well, think about those market maker tactics we were discussing, like the liquidity sweep. Right, where they intentionally push the price in a certain direction to trigger those stop loss orders. Exactly. Well, volume price impact is one of the tools they can use to create that movement. Because they have the resources to place those massive orders, those boulders, that can really move the market. Exactly. So it's not always about manipulation, but it is out about understanding that these players, they have the ability to influence the market in a way that most retail traders simply can't. Okay, so it's like, I shouldn't assume that every price movement is driven by some kind of organic supply and demand. Right, there could be other forces at play, especially when you're talking about those sudden, sharp movements. So how do we avoid getting caught in those traps, those liquidity mm -hmm. sweeps and all that? It's all about being aware of the possibilities. Okay, that sounds a bit vague. 
Give me something concrete to hold on to. All right. Well, remember how we were talking about the order book earlier? Yeah, that's where all the buy and sell orders are listed, right? Like a giant marketplace for stocks. Exactly. But it's also a window into the market psyche. Okay, now you're losing me again. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is the order book can tell you a lot about the balance of power between buyers and sellers. Right, because you can see how many people are willing to buy or sell at different price levels. Exactly. But here's the thing. Remember our discussion about hidden liquidity? Oh, right. The iceberg orders and all that, right. where what you see on the surface isn't always the whole story. Precisely. Right. So you might look at the order book and see a massive buy order just sitting there at a certain price. And you might think, jackpot, this is my chance to sell at a great price. Because that big buy order is like a signal that someone's willing to buy a lot of shares. Right. But here's the catch. That big order might not actually be as big as it seems. Because it could be an iceberg order with the bulk of it hidden from view. You got it. So you go to sell thinking you've got a guaranteed buyer and suddenly you're the one pushing the price down. Wait, so I thought I was being clever spotting an opportunity, but I actually walked right into a trap. It happens. Huh. And it's exactly why this source emphasizes the importance of not getting blinded by the raw numbers on the screen. So how do we avoid falling into that trap? How do we see through those iceberg orders and all that? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And I think the answer is a combination of experience, knowledge, and a healthy dose of skepticism. So it's not just about having the fastest algorithms. It's about understanding the nuances of the market, the psychology of the players. Exactly. It's like the difference between being a tourist and a local. OK, I like that analogy. So we've covered a lot of ground here today, from trapped volume to iceberg orders to the very nature of market making itself. It's been quite a journey. It has. But I think the most important takeaway for me, and hopefully for our listeners as well, is that knowledge is power. Couldn't agree more. Even if we never plan to scalp a single share, just understanding these concepts, these dynamics at play behind the scenes, it makes us more informed traders. Exactly. It's like you don't need to be a mechanic to know that you should check your oil regularly. <laughs> right. It's about preventative maintenance, making sure we're not driving blind. Exactly. And now, thanks to this deep dive, you got a few more tools in your toolkit. That we do. So to our listeners out there, thank you for joining us on this wild ride. We hope you found it as enlightening as we did. And remember, the market's always evolving. So keep learning, keep asking questions. And keep those deep dive requests coming. Until next time, happy trading, everyone.